Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. This is the second part to our top-down player movement tutorial. If you haven't seen the first lesson, then click the video in the top right corner, watch that one, and then come back and finish this one. In the last lesson, we showed you how to create the basic player movement script for a top-down shooter, like our Season 1 project. If you'd like to be involved in the collaboration of our Season 1 project, then you'll want to join our Discord server, which is linked to in the description below. In this lesson, we're going to be taking our player movement script, which we created in the last video, and we're going to be adapting it into a controller that will work for a multiplayer game. We'll be using the Photon 2 plugin for this tutorial, so make sure that you have it installed in your project. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. So here I have my Season 1 project open inside of Unity, and before we get started, you're going to need to have your project set up so that you can join and create multiplayer games. If you don't have this already set up, then you're going to want to watch through our tutorial series on the basics of the Photon 2 plugin. You can find this playlist in the top right corner of this video. So first off, I'm going to play through my game so that you can see what should be happening by the end of this tutorial. So here I have my game playing, and my game has connected to the Photon network. Now when I click Battle, my game will create a new room and join the multiplayer scene. And then if I go over to a standalone and I click Battle, I will then join that room and load the multiplayer scene. And so here you can see I have two spaceships within my scene. Now at the moment, you can see that the spaceships are both moving with my mouse position. That's because both of these applications are open on the same computer. If they were open on separate computers, then we wouldn't be moving both spaceships at the same time. We'd only be moving our spaceship. Now you'll notice that I can only control one spaceship at a time with its forward movement. If I have my standalone selected, then it's the spaceship on the right that I'm controlling. And if I switch over to my editor, then it is the spaceship on the left that I'm controlling. So I'm now going to show you how to synchronize this movement across the network and allow each player to only control their spaceship. So first off, I want to go through the setup of your multiplayer game so that we know that we're on the same page. You'll notice that I have a lobby controller and a room controller. We've talked about these game objects in previous videos. The lobby controller basically just handles the connection to the Photon network and as well creating new rooms and joining existing rooms. The room controller handles the transition from the main menu scene to the multiplayer scene and as well instantiates the Photon player prefab into the multiplayer scene. The Photon player prefab represents each player within your multiplayer game and also instantiates your player avatar. Within our Photon player controller script, you can see here we have our avatar spawning script. We then have the player avatar prefab, which is what the players will actually be controlling within the game. So now that we've talked about the setup of our project, let's dive into synchronizing the player movement across the network. For this, we'll be working mostly with the player avatar. So I've opened it up in the inspector. Now yours will look a little bit different than mine, but at the moment you should have a collider of some sort. In this case, I'm using a capsule collider. You'll also want to have a rigid body, and I've frozen the position in the Y direction, and I've frozen the rotation in the X and Z direction. And the last thing that you should have at the moment on your player avatar is the movement controller. Now the components that you'll need to add are first the photon view, and then the photon transform view. Both of these components together will be doing most of the synchronizing of the player's movement. For this tutorial, we'll only be synchronizing the position and the rotation of our object. You'll then want to make sure that you've added the Photon Transform view to the Observed Components list in your Photon view. Now although these components will be doing the majority of the work, we're not quite done yet. Next we want to open up our Movement Controller script. Once you have your script open, the first thing that we're going to be doing is adding this variable here. This is a public Photon view and I've called it PV. You're then going to want to initialize this variable within the start function. Here I'm setting PV equal to get component and then photon view. The next thing that we want to do is use this photon view to determine whether or not we own this object. And if we own this object, then we can control it. To do this, we want to scroll down to our update function, which is located right here. Inside our update function, we have our boosters function and we have our PC look at mouse function. 
Our boosters function just controls whether or not our spaceship should be playing its particle effect. And we want that particle effect to be playing across all the clients. And so I'm going to leave that one alone. However, our PC look at mouse function should only be controlled by the owner of its spaceship. However, the PC look at mouse function should only be executed by the owner of this spaceship. And the reason why is because this function receives direct input from the user. And so just before this function, we need to add in a condition checking to see if pv.isMine is false. That means that we do not own this object. And if we do not own this object, then we can return. And so if we do own this object, then we'll skip the return and we'll execute this function. Next, we need to handle our forward movement. And so I'm going to scroll down to our fixed update function. Here we have our movement function being called, and we need to check to make sure that we own this object or we don't own this object. For this example, I've decided to check to see if we own the object. And so I have if pv.isMine equals true, then we execute this function. And so you can either do it like this, where you're checking to see if you own it, and if you own it, then you put all those functions inside the if statement, or you can do it like this, where you're checking to see if you don't own it, and then you return if you don't own it. So that's everything that we need to do to synchronize the movement of our spaceships, but now we need to synchronize the boosters. To do this, I'm gonna scroll down to our boosters function, which is located right here, and inside our first if statement, where we are setting our booster to play, I wanna add an if statement checking to see if we own this spaceship. If we own this spaceship, then I wanna send an RPC command to all the other clients. And so I have pv.rpc, I then have the function name in quotes, and then RPC target.others. Inside our next if statement, where we are turning off our boosters, I have another if statement checking to see if we own this spaceship. If we do own this spaceship, I am then sending another RPC command, but this one is a different function name. So now let's go and look at these two RPC functions. The first one is right here. It's our RPC send booster on. You'll need to make sure that you have your pun RPC tag out in front of it. And then inside this function, we are essentially just setting our is boosting variable equal to true. For our other RPC function, which is called RPC send booster off, we are setting our is booster variable to false. So what's essentially happening is in our movement function, whenever we press down on the W key, we are setting our is boosting variable equal to true. But that's only happening on the local player because of this if statement here. Then we're calling our boosters function across all the clients in the update function. And inside our boosters function, we are checking to see if is boosting equals true but that we haven't started playing our particle effect yet. At first, this will only be true for the local player. We'll then start playing the particle effect for the local player, and then we'll send an RPC message to all the other clients. And this RPC message will set is boosting equal to true. So now that is boosting is true across all the clients, our other clients will now be able to execute through the boosters function for this spaceship, which will then start playing the booster's particle effect on those clients. We're then doing the exact same thing, but for turning off the boosters. So now that you know how it works, let's go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we need to look at our player avatar prefab. And the last thing that we need to do is make sure that we're initializing any missing variables within our scripts. Now the only variable I'm missing on this object is the my camera variable. And the reason why I'm missing it is because that object is within my multiplayer scene. But this is a prefab that has to be instantiated into the scene. So in order to initialize this variable, we need to create some code to do so. So I'm going to open up our movement controller script again, and I'm going to scroll up to the top where I have this public function here. This is a public function with the return type of void, and it's called setup. I'm also passing in a parameter, which is of type camera, and it's called camera in. I'm then setting my camera equal to camera in. 
Now I'm calling this function within my photon player controller script, which is attached to my photon player prefab. This is the script that is instantiating the player avatar into the multiplayer scene. Now shortly after I instantiate the player avatar into the scene, I gain access to the movement controller script attached to it. I then call the setup function and I pass in the camera from my scene as the parameter. And I gain access to my camera through my photon game setup script, which looks like this. This script can be found attached to an empty game object within my multiplayer scene. And you can see that I've set the my camera variable equal to the camera object within my hierarchy. The only other variable that needs to be initialized in your code is the target variable of your camera follow script. Now this line of code can look a little intimidating, but it's really quite simple. We're first accessing the singleton of our photon game setup script. That will get us this game object right here. We're then getting the my camera variable from that script. Using that game object that's saved in that variable, which is the main camera, we're then getting the camera follow script from that game object. We're then accessing the target variable of the camera follow script, and we're setting it equal to the camera target of our movement controller script. Now if you don't quite understand what's happening in these two lines, to put it simply, we're accessing the variables that haven't been initialized yet because we're working with prefabs that don't start within our scene, and we're setting those variables to the values that they need to be set to. So for this first line, we're using a function that's part of our movement controller script to pass in the camera from our scene to the variable of our player avatar. Now for the second line of code, we're accessing the camera follow script, which is attached to our main camera, and we're setting the target variable of that script equal to the camera target variable of our player avatar. In the future, I might have to do a whole video on different ways to set up cameras for multiplayer games. But once we have all of our variables initialized, we can then save our scripts and go back to Unity. So a quick overview of what we've done in this lesson. We attached a photon view and a photon transform view to our player avatar prefab. We then modified the movement controller script so that only the local player can control his spaceship. We then synchronized the particle effect of our spaceship across the network. And finally, we made sure that all of our variables will be initialized when we instantiate our player avatar into the multiplayer scene. So now that we figured that out, we want to apply the changes that we made to our prefab. I'm then going to remove my player avatar from the hierarchy and I'll load into my main menu scene. I can then build my project and I'll demonstrate it one more time. All right, so once we're connected up, you can see that I can move my mouse around and that the spaceship on the right will follow my mouse wherever it goes. And I can push down W and my boosters will start and I can start moving, but I'm only moving my spaceship. And you can also see that the boosters work on both clients. And then if I switch over, you can see that I can now start controlling the other spaceship. Now that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a movement controller for a top-down shooter and as well how to network that controller. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.